What's going on guys? We are here today at Dr. Frank J. Hayden Secondary School. That is a high school. Now I was here actually giving a little speech to uh, um, some grade 10s I believe they were for entrepreneurial class and uh, really just give you some tips and insights on uh, you know my day-to-day -day as an entrepreneur. So check it out. The three industries I run now, which I've been building over the past eight years, is a landscaping company called Lawn Care Alert, which my younger brother actually runs. Uh, we have over 500 uh, clients in uh, Oakfield, Bur Burlington, and Mississauga area. Uh, eFresh Meals, which is a meal prep company. We deliver prepared meals all across Ontario. And then the final one is in real estate. So the real estate is a, uh, is a little bit bigger and more convoluted, but I have a, a renovations company, a property management company, and then Holco Company. So we have about 60 properties right now, increasing at about 10 a month. And basically what we do is we find uh, depressed properties in areas like... Uh, uh, not in areas like this, but outside of the GTA, like St. Catharines, um, uh, we go as far as Sudbury even, and find properties that are very depressed. We go in, we kick out the, the, the crappy landlords, uh, renovate them, uh, raise the value, refinance, and then lease them out. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much my story, guys. And, and just to tell you, like, uh, like anything, like I said, business is not for the faint of heart. I mean, like anything you do and you want to succeed in life, you're really going to be challenged more than anything. And the biggest thing with, with anything, and this is business, this is life, this is friends, and anything is, is really just to not give up. If you're not giving up and you don't quit, then, then you're going to succeed. As weird as that sounds, everybody who's reached a certain success in life or gotten somewhere has not done that without failure. That's graduating school, that's university, that's, that's business, is anything. And you're going to reach failure points in every single one of them. But honestly, when you get through that and you get to the next stage, there's never a time where that happens where you don't feel better about yourself. This is even the gym. The gym is a, a great one to, uh, to get this to. The gym is something where a lot of people can see quick results, so they stay consistent and they like it. But it's the same formula. If you put in the 10,000 hours there, you're going to look like a bodybuilder. You really were, will if you, if you eat properly as well, too. And that's the biggest thing I want to say. I, I really want to get into you guys with your questions so I can answer anything that's like, ah, what do I do if I don't have money? I can answer that. I've not had money before. What do I do if... Uh, I don't feel I know anybody, or my people skills are bad, or what do I do? Honestly, ask any question, and I'm going to answer it. There's, there's literally, there's something for everybody. I know different entrepreneurs who are introverts, extroverts, smart, dumb, all over the place. Like, I'm, I'm a scattered person. I'm not an organized individual, but I work with a lot of people who are organized because I know my weakness is there. So uh, if you guys have stuff, I'm telling you, the, the, that'll be the best thing, the q and I'll answer anything, and, uh, and yeah, that's my spiel. Let's, let's, uh, let's give it a whirl. Anybody got anything? What skills would you need to be a successful entrepreneur? The number one is going to be perseverance, by far. Because I've done things, guys, without money. I've done things without the talent necessary to do it. But if you have perseverance, you're going to figure it out. So one of my big things, because I have a lot of friends who are entrepreneurs, and I, and I find one of the hardest things, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you really want to set your goals high. And the reason I say that is because you're not going to avoid the 60 to 70 hours of work, especially when you're starting a new business or a small business. You're going to have to put in that work because you're not just the labor. You're also the marketing. You're also the accounting. You're everything at the beginning because you can't afford anybody else. So when you hit those points, like anything that you're really striving hard for, right? Um, it could be the same with you know, trying to uh, expedite your learning on, a, on a, you know, a guitar or something. Anything you're trying to get really good at. You're going to hit those failure points. And so perseverance more than anything, because you're not going to have the knowledge when you start. You're going to have to learn, and you're going to have to go through that. Reading obviously helps, but you're really going to have to put yourself in the fire and learn that. So if you don't have perseverance to say, no, fuck it, or excuse my language, sorry, screw it, I don't care what people uh, say or think or anything, I'm just going to go to it. Just have that like, unbelievable ability in yourself, because it, literally everybody can do it. Trust me, guys, I've seen it. I've, I've, gone up, I've made seven figures, I've lost seven figures, gone to serving tables for people who recognize me on TV, and did it all again. So there's no excuses for anybody. And I did that at a decade older than you guys. Like, I didn't even start learning until 25. So I'm jealous of you guys, not just because of your amazing school and nice football field. We, we didn't have any of that stuff. But honestly, you guys have eight, 10 years on me right now to start that path. And, and I'm just explaining that because it's, uh, you know, it's crazy. I, I took advantage of high school in a different way. It's really good for social skills. But in all honesty, if you guys listen to the people above you who, who learn and, 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 it, and it put in that lesson, you don't really know. When you're 15, 16, you're like, no, I know everything now. When you're 12, you thought that. When you're 20, you think that. When you're 30, you think that, but you realize you don't know that at 20, and you don't know that at 15, and that's, I swear, I'm sure when I'm 40, I'm going to feel the same way, right? So uh, it's something to keep in mind, because as you get older, you do value time more, and you do value the opinion of people older than you who have more experience. Um, and I would take the time to, uh, to understand that. And if you want something, if you have anything in your head that you're looking to do later on, don't put that off now. Start learning towards that now, because if you start your learning curve now, you guys are going to be experts in a few years, no matter what it is. So. What challenge do you find with the 
are expanding uh, onwards to all of Ontario or all of Canada? Yeah, so it's actually very difficult to hire in Halton because uh, the, the, it can be, depending on what the position is, right? Um, so some of the youth, for instance, don't, don't really need to work or don't get jobs. It's a little more lax in that environment. Um, but we hire kind of all over, like, so we, we, we ship all over Ontario for eFresh meals, obviously, already. And um, the landscaping, yeah, will continue to expand in the GTA and build out from there. And then the real estate is really, right now, we're pretty much in St. Catharines and Sudbury, so really on, on different parts. But those are expanding. Like, we're going to different cities that need the work. We're going to where the volume is, where we can find 50 to 100 plus homes in each city, and then we go to that city and then, and then do our work there. But uh, yeah, expansion, yeah, we'll continue to, yeah. How do you compete against competitors? So I don't like looking at people as competition typically, because one thing about this universe, guys, every single day there's more money in this system today than there was yesterday, and that'll repeat forever. So everything always grows. That means markets grow as well, too. We have markets that we never even knew of. Cryptocurrency is growing as well, too. That's a new market. That's actually going to spur new money that never existed before. Most people don't understand how the, the financial system works. So I'll, I'll give you like a, a little peek into it, but there's a thing called fractional reserve banking. So when you put in a dollar to the bank, the, the bank can lend out 10 times that. So if you're saving money, what's happening is you're putting $100 away and then they're lending $1,000 to an entrepreneur who's gonna borrow that from them and then put that back into the system. So you're creating money by doing this and creating new markets creates more money and they grow. So to me in new markets, I look at my competition as people who are actually trying to help grow that market. And if you have too much competition, you're probably in too small of a market. My market in real estate is a $4 trillion market in residential real estate just in Canada. I mean, it's gonna be tough, like, there's, there's, there's a lot of room there, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I try to avoid that kind of 1970s, 80s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s mentality of having to compete and crush your competitors, you know, uh, unless they do something stupid, then cool. But honestly, you should be focused on your own growth and doing things differently, and I think that that's uh, better to look at them as people helping grow the market than competition if you can. Yes. Um, did you find it hard to make a name for yourself? You know, when you, if you're starting a business young, yeah, it's tough for people to take you seriously. But the people who get it, uh, like if you're young starting a business, the people who get it are actually going to like it even more. Like people who understand it. The people who are going to be a little against it are the people who don't understand business or don't do that for themselves, right? So um, it can be tough, but if you're confident in yourself and you're learning and, and getting towards it, look, you're not going to be an expert in everything. My, my, I was a year into my, uh, the landscaping company, and I remember my buddy coming over and being like, great, so what are your margins? And I was like, well, what, what's, a, what's a margin? <coughs> what are you talking about, right? And I had, I had no clue. So, you know, you yourself might feel a little insecure at times, but as long as you can feel confident in what you're doing and you believe in it, then people aren't going to have a hard time taking you seriously. And once you get momentum, that's easier to build. But for sure, when you first start out, um, you know, those are little roadblocks that you just have to get over. Because you're not going to know your industry or whatever it is you're doing through a team. But the odds are, if you're starting a business, you probably know it better than some randoms you're talking to about it. So as long as you know what you're doing, it's going to be easy. I think that the hardest roadblocks, again, is your own, your own mind than anything. Nobody else. How, like, as like a team, can we like make our money work for us? Honestly, like if I could have started and bought my first rental property way sooner, that's what I would have done. That's been the best return of anything I've ever done. If, and you can go to areas where you're going to be able to afford one there much sooner than you can here. You know what I mean? You can find one for 250, 300. I mean, maybe work with a partner. Maybe you, you know, everyone has different relationships, but maybe you could be like, hey, you know, mom, dad, or somebody. It doesn't have to be any of them there. If I save up half, and can I get a loan from you guys, and I'll pay you from the cash flow here. You know, you can be creative with things like that. Like I said, the only way I was able to buy my first home was get four fucking people involved, yeah. and five of us went on one tiny, shitty little home, yeah. right? So there's always ways to get things done, but I would put money into a pot for a rental property that cash flows. That's very important. You don't want that's going to break even. If you have a home, you should be making at least 500 bucks a month after all expenses are paid. And there's not going to be anything that returns something like that. And then the side, you can get you know, physical silver and gold. You can do it online too, but it's kind of cool to have that. And it's like, okay, that's my depression hedge. You know what I mean? Get a little crypto. Okay, crypto. This can get a hundred X return. That's great. I have a little bit here, but nothing that's going to be like, I can't believe I lost this or, or that, right? But you're building those little bases, a little bit of stocks, a little bit of crypto, a little bit of gold, and then you have your real estate. Because when you get to, like on my side, lar larger scale on real estate, they're going to make you diversify regardless. They're going to be like, where's your money in the stocks? I'm like, fuck, okay. Here you go. Where's your life insurance? Okay, cool.